All right. I'll and accept. Which can we do that? It's in, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay, finally. So uh, now we are going to um, hear from uh, Jordi Armengol Estape. I don't know if I'm which yeah. are your name. Um, and he's going to tell us about um, an ML scale data set of executable C functions. Okay. Thank you. Uh, can you hear me? I think yeah, your screen is not being shared to that. So I think it's on the external mode. Ah, yeah. Gather sharing is fine. Uh, HTML sharing is the problem. So you can mirror your screen with the display setting. Right? Okay, uh, sorry about that. Uh, can you hear me? Um, so uh, I'm Jordi, uh, and I'm here to present uh, XEvents, which is a, a, a new data set of uh, executable uh, C functions. And this is joint work with uh, my colleagues at the University of Edinburgh, and this was supervised by Mike O'Boyle. So uh, we are in the era of uh, heterogeneous computing meaning that we have uh, so many uh, instruction set uh, architectures, many different devices like TPUs, GPUs, uh, different APIs for doing uh, uh, low-level compute like uh, Python, TensorFlow, and so on. And this, in practice, uh, means that there is a constant need to rewrite uh, low-level software. And this ends up uh, Harming the adoption of new platforms uh, and in the disincentivates innovation. Um, so that's why uh, Michael Foyle uh, published an article called uh, Rethinking the Role of the Compiler in a Heterogeneous World. And basically, he says that um, due to uh, these uh, new needs of the uh, heterogeneous uh, era, uh, compile, the compiler community perhaps should uh, rethink the role of the compiler and should uh, embrace ideas from other communities like software engineering, um, machine learning, or uh, natural language processing. Um, so uh, with these embracing ideas uh, from these communities, perhaps we could at least partially uh, automate the translation uh, to new targets. Uh, using machine learning, but uh, from uh, to start with, like it's not even clear if we, we have the data for that. 
uh, because existing data sets for uh, low level code, uh, mainly uh, C, they are either uh, synthetic or not uh, representative of the real world distribution of code. Uh, they might be not large enough for machine learning because many uh, program synthesis benchmarks for C are considerably, considerably uh, small. So they could be used for evaluation, but not for training models. And finally, some of them are quite large and they are real world, but uh, they are not uh, executable. Like this is the case of uh, Angabench. So that's why we decided to build a, a data set of uh, executable C functions. And basically there are uh, two problems. The main problem, the main first problem is uh, compilability, meaning uh, you cannot compile C functions in the wild because uh, there are missing dependencies. And the second problem is uh, executability, meaning that you also need the hardness of a, a main function calling the, the function you want to execute and you want to read uh, data from the standard input and write data back to the standard output. And finally, you also need uh, input-output pairs. So uh, Angabench solved the compatibility problem by uh, using um, type inference techniques. And they basically take function by function and they uh, inject the missing uh, dependencies uh, using a synthetic uh, dependencies. So basically, they uh, with type inference, they infer which are the missing uh, type definitions, uh, auxiliary function uh, declarations, and so on. But uh, this way, they solve the compatibility problem, but they don't solve the uh, executability problem, because this cannot be uh, executed. Because for instance, the auxiliary uh, functions, they are declared, but they are not defined. Uh, on the other hand, there is a well-studied uh, uh, field that is the one of uh, automatic unit test generation. And there are many approaches for doing so, like SMT-based approaches, uh, symbolic execution-based approaches, and so on. But in practice, uh, some of these approaches are either slow or they are not fully uh, automated because they require uh, the external specification of the input domains. Um, and instead, we wanted a very large data set. Um, so we, we did uh, basically three things. We took, a, we extracted uh, or generated uh, real and synthetic dependencies. And then we, to make it, this was to make it uh, compatible and to make it executable, we automatically generated uh, wrappers and random input output pairs. And this is the overview of the overall process. Um, so for compatibility, we have two plans. Plan A is using the real dependencies, uh, which is a scenario. And plan B is using uh, synthetic dependencies. Um, so for the real dependencies, we try to expand, to expand macros and then uh, compile the, the, the function. If the compilation fails, we then try some heuristics to locate the missing uh, dependencies. Um, ideally, this should be done project, like on a project basis, not function by function. But we go function by function because we have found that uh, at the end of the day, uh, in many cases, we had to manually like parse um, readme files because many repositories, uh, they contain instructions that a human is supposed to follow. Like, uh, we assume that this system has these dependencies, or you have to uh, go to that uh, page and download this, this library. So that's why we went uh, function by function. The plan B is injecting uh, synthetic declarations. That's what the authors from Angabench did. Then for executability, first of all, we automatically generate wrappers. Uh, that have a main function, uh, they read and, uh, and write to the standard input uh, and output, uh, and they call the, the function that we want to evaluate. And they also measure the execution time. And then for the dependencies, if we fold the real dependencies approach, then we are done. Of course, it might break, it might be a segmentation false, it might be unsafe, and that's why we run this in a 
uh, virtualized uh, environment, but we cannot do anything else. In the case of the synthetic dependencies, um, the thing is that the function is not yet executable because uh, we have synthetic declarations, but not definitions. So what we did is we injected uh, random definitions. Um, then we run this on uh, the C portion of the big of the BigQuery uh, crawling of GitHub, uh, which has about 8.5 million uh, C functions. And after that, we found out that our tool uh, was quite fast on 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 this uh, data set, which is what we wanted, uh, at the expense of uh, having less uh, input-output uh, complexity and coverage. So we generate two kinds of um, input-output pairs. In one case, we, we, we get a simple uh, input-output pairs, meaning that we can execute the function, we can record the execution time, but uh, the input-output pairs are constant or identity. So this is not useful for, for instance, program synthesis. It might be useful for uh, measuring the execution time, for instance. Pairs, meaning that uh, the input output pairs are complex enough so that uh, a constant or identity function cannot solve it. And these are the, the results uh, on Nangabens and GitHub. And basically, uh, we uh, get about uh, 300,000 uh, uh, executable functions in Nangabens. And of these, about 36,000 are with rich input output pairs. And in GitHub, um, the numbers are uh, bigger because the original set is also bigger. Uh, we get about 156,000 uh, uh, executable functions with rich input output pairs. And also, we noticed that uh, even in Angavens, like there are many uh, duplicated functions. So, like about 15% of the functions in the original Angavens are duplicate, and in GitHub, more or less half of the C functions are duplicate. Um, so apparently, many of them are just copy pasted. And this is an example of that kind of input output pairs we can get. Like this is a very simple function, um, uh, GCD. And this is just integers, and there are no uh, pointers. But we also support um, arrays, uh, structs, nested structs, uh, and enumerations. And this was for um, analyzing the, the results in terms of the uh, success rate. Uh, but now, in, uh, let's, let's try to organize this into a, an actual data set. And what we did is do a, a train validation test split, but the thing is that unlike in other machine learning tasks, this is not trivial to split because there are different, um, like not all the instances have the same features. Um, and we try to make uh, a split that allows for, for different tasks. And each function, uh, apart from the function definition, also has some uh, metadata to track back the original, uh, where the original function was, uh, input output pairs, and also the, the dependencies. Um, then uh, this, this data set is going to be published after PLDI, and it's going to be published in the uh, hiring phase data sets hub uh, because we wanted it to make it uh, easy to use. So now iterating over this, this data set, it's three lines of code. So you, you just have to import the um, data sets library, uh, load the, the split that you want, and then you are good for iterating over the data set. And we hope that this should uh, encourage the use of this data set for machine learning tasks because um, there are many data sets that are very interesting, but at the end of the day, you have to care about like downloading a compressed file uh, that is in a CSV or it just, you don't know the format. And this here, in this case, you don't have to worry at all about the, the format. And also, uh, uh, it would be interesting to integrate it to other frameworks, like for instance, compiler gene. Uh, regarding the applications, the first one is uh, code evaluation using uh, observational uh, equivalents, but we also believe that it has enough scale to be data we use to train machine learning models. Um, so there are tasks that could be 
useful for for this uh, that that could leverage this data set like uh, compilation uh, the decomp compilation program synthesis and perhaps program search or program repair. And as future work, there are two very clear lines of work, and uh, we are already working on these ones. Um, one of them is uh, improving um, the real dependencies retrieval, uh, because right now uh, it's um, basically it's a data set, but it could be a database. So you could do like uh, smarter queries to get the, the original dependencies. And the other way, the other uh, line of work, uh, this is what the author from Angamens are doing right now, that it's doing uh, a static analysis for having better input-output coverage. Um, the problem is that uh, these trips of um, input-output uh, complexity for scalability. So it would be interesting to see if there is a, uh, a way to get the best of both uh, worlds. Uh, and to sum up, uh, we have uh, presented a new C uh, data set that it's a uh, real world code, so it's pre representative. Um, it has enough uh, scale to be uh, used for training machine learning models. It's bigger than previous approaches for um, compilable C functions because, like, the original bank event was 1 million, and this one is 4 million and a half um, functions. And finally, it also has a portion of each data set that can be executed. Uh, with input output pairs. And we foresee uh, applications in neural compilation, neural decompilation, uh, problem synthesis, and code evaluation. Uh, and that's it. Thank you for your attention. We have time for one quick question. This one is the best one, I think. I'm going to get this picture. Excellent. This picture is very good. I have to walk out from this.